Hello, and welcome to the introduction of Location Enhanced Reports, which are now available in the Call Quality Dashboard. My name is Rudy Peterson, and I am a member of the Skype for Business Customer Lifecycle Services team. Our team goal is to enhance the customer and partner experience by capturing feedback and influencing product direction while enabling organizations of any size to access our cloud services so that they may experience best-in-class readiness and deployment. This session is part of the Skype operations framework that enables your business outcomes through cloud communications. For more information about the Skype operations framework, please follow the link provided. This recording is part of the April 2017 contribution to the Skype operations framework. For more information about this recording and others, please visit the link provided or the announcement blog. The information found in this and other training material may be focused on updates for previously delivered assets or may be introducing new features and training material. We encourage you to always be working with the latest assets. The Skype operations framework is a living framework that we continue to expand with new offers as well as making updates to existing assets. A key driver for those updates and changes are your suggestions and feedback. If you can take a few moments and visit the feedback site noted here or use the link on the main site to access the feedback channels, we would appreciate your thoughts and ideas. As part of the multifaceted approach to the Skype operational framework, we have also created a community where the team responsible for the framework is looking forward to hearing from you regarding how you are applying framework guidance to your projects, as well as sharing lessons learned. We invite you to sign up and take part in that community today. Today, I will be introducing a new feature in the Call Quality Dashboard called Location Enhanced Reports. This video is intended to provide an overview of the Location Enhanced Reports. You will see where the reports can be found in CQD, and then we will examine the reports so that you may understand the information which is available from the reports. The goal is to provide the information you need in order to become familiar with Location Enhanced Reports so that you may begin to use them for your own purposes. This video will build upon information that was previously introduced in earlier training videos for the Call Quality Dashboard. In order to realize the full benefits of the Location Enhanced Reports, you will need to have already uploaded your network subnet information into the Call Quality Dashboard portal. The network subnet information needs to include not only subnets, but location names which are associated with the subnets and roles on your network. This information is going to be key for the identification of network source traffic as well as network destination traffic and then categorization of that traffic. You should also be familiar with the terms listed here so that you may understand the references within this video. If you are not familiar with the terms or need a refresher, you will want to view the Call Quality Dashboard Basics video. You will find a link to all of the Skype Operational Framework training resources and videos at the end of this presentation. The primary goal of the Location Enhanced Reports is to present a view for the health of the Skype for Business traffic traversing identified networks and then let you drill down into the details of that information so that you may understand any performance issues. This goal can be accomplished through a couple of different methods. Proactive, the identification of a building or location that is trending negatively, warranting an investigation to reverse the trend. Reactive, following up on tickets and issues reported by users from specific locations through the investigation of the hosting location. Okay, let's get started. When you first log in to CQD, 
you are presented with an overall call quality report. In order to navigate to the Location Enhanced Reports, we need to select Summary Reports at the top of the CQD Reports page and the Navigation link for Location Enhanced Reports. It is worth noting that you will only be able to navigate to the Location Enhanced Reports from the Summary Reports page. Here we see the Overview Report, which appears first when entering the Location Enhanced Reports section. One of the first things you may notice is that a filter for second building has already been selected. Each time you enter the Location Enhanced Reports, you will find that this filter is selected by default. The reason for this is that the Location Enhanced Reports were created specifically for the investigation of locations identified using the subnet data that your organization has previously uploaded to CQD. If the purpose of using the Location Enhanced Reports was to focus on a particular site, then you would click on the drop-down box for second building name and select from the list presented the network subnet name associated with the location that you wish to investigate. The overview report would then redraw showing you only data for that location. Moving on to the rest of the report, you may have noticed the scenario column on the left side of the report. Inside the scenario column, you will notice there are three main sections titled Wired, Wi-Fi, and Mobile BB. The purpose of each is to describe the location of the client involved with the call. Inside each scenario, there is a pair called Client, Server, or Client, Client which describe if the client is connected to a server for a conference or to another client for a person-to-person -person media exchange. Inside each pair, there are one or more network categories of outside, outside, inside, outside, and inside, inside. Inside refers to the location of one endpoint that is hosted on a managed network. Outside refers to the location of one endpoint and that it is on an unmanaged network. The network column to the right of scenario refers to the metrics for a month of data. Poor percentage is the poor call rate percentage for the time period. Volume refers to the number of calls during the time period. Looking back at the top of the report, we see that other reports available to use are Buildings, Wired, Buildings, Wi-Fi, and Mobile, LTE. Each report refers to a location and a connection method. Each report focuses on server-client communication for the location and connection method of that report. Let's look at the Buildings Wired report next. Here is a view of what the Buildings Wired report looks like when you first view the report. As the name implies, this report focuses on scenarios where the client is located in a known building and is utilizing a wired connection to the network. Again, we see that the filter for buildings is by default available for focusing the report on a specific location. Focusing on the first section of the report in the top left, we see the volume of wired calls by month with the measured poor call percentage as a trend line. Moving just to the right, there is a breakout of the volume and poor percentage for wired calls and conferences. We also see the number of user feedback responses that were filled out by users along with their averaged perceived poor call rating. Finally, we see the volume of calls that involved PSTN and the poor call percentage associated with those calls. The next section of the report 
shows us the volume by day of the week for the current month of data. It also shows an overlay of the poor percentage. Just to the right, we see the volume for the last month by day along with volume for the current month by day. Again, we see the poor percentage overlaid on the report. The lower graph shows us the volume of calls by hour for the current month with an overlay of poor percentage. This table is shown in UTC for ease of use. The next report section shows the desktop client version in use for the current month along with spark lines showing the trending volume of good, unclassified, poor, and poor percentage of traffic associated with that client version. This report can be very useful for discovery of client performance in your environment and can help make decisions about prioritization of client updates. The final section of the Building Wired report shows the desktop client audio devices in use. This report is important as it can show adoption of approved audio devices within your organization, which can lead to improved call quality. This concludes the review of the building's wired section. So let's move on to the building's Wi-Fi section now. At first glance of the building Wi-Fi report, we see some similarities to the last report but with a focus on connections involving Wi-Fi. The top of the report once again has the default building filter available in order to allow you to focus on a specific location quickly. Looking at the first section of the report on the top left, we see a table that represents call volume using Wi-Fi for several months with the poor percentage overlaid as a trend line. Moving just to the right, we see a breakout of the volume and poor percentage for Wi-Fi calls and conferences. We also see the number of user feedback responses that were filled out and the average poor perceived rating. Finally, we see the volume of calls that involved PSTN and the poor percentage for calls. In the next section, we get to look at the volume of usage as it pertains to Wi-Fi band and radio type that was in use on the Wi-Fi network. An important feature of the reports that I need to bring to your attention is the ability to move your mouse over a chart and see details about the report. For example, if you move your mouse over the Wi-Fi band pie chart, you will see metrics for the section that you are hovering over. Here you see portions of two screenshots, which show the mouse over the 5 GHz portion of the pie graph, then over the 2.4 GHz portion. Note the poor percentage that is reported when 5 GHz is used. Compare that to the poor percentage that is reported when 2.4 GHz is used. From this information, we can draw the conclusion that it would appear calls using 5 GHz Wi-Fi will have a better experience than calls on a 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi connection. Moving to the next section of the report, we see the volume by day of the week for the current month of data. Also shown is an overlay of the poor percentage. Just to the right, we see the volume of calls for the last month by day along with the volume for the current month by day. Again, we see the poor percentage overlaid on the report. The bottom graph in this section of the report shows us the volume of calls by hour for the current month with an overlay of the poor percentage. This table is shown in UTC for ease of use. Moving to the next section of this report, we see poor percentage as it relates to volume on Wi-Fi channels for both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. For this example, we see that there are no single channels on 2.4 GHz 
which have significantly better performance than any other channel on 2.4 GHz. If we compare the poor percentage on 5 GHz to 2.4 GHz, we see that poor percentage is lower overall on 5 GHz. Towards the bottom of the report, we find a table that lists Wi-Fi network adapters in use by desktop clients. In this report, we see the performance for the various drivers in use, which presents us with an opportunity to find versions of drivers that work best in the deployment for the users. Provided in this section of the report are sparklines showing the trending volume of good, unclassified, poor, and poor percentage of traffic associated with the Wi-Fi network driver versions. The next report section shows the desktop client version in use for the current month along with spark lines showing trending volume of good, unclassified, poor, and poor percentage of traffic associated with that client version. This report can be very useful for the discovery of client performance issues that are specific to the operation on wireless networks and aid in decisions about prioritization of client updates. The final report in Buildings Wi-Fi presents the volume of usage for different desktop client audio devices utilized by clients. This information can be used to help identify locations which may benefit from education about best practices such as using a Skype for Business certified headset in order to reduce artifacts like echo and feedback. The last report section available for the Location Enhanced Reports is the Mobile LTE Server Client Calls. This section focuses on clients that are connected and consuming services from a mobile carrier network. In the first section of the report, we see again the call volume by month for clients using cellular and connecting directly to a server. Overlaid again is the poor percentage for the calls. Just to the right, we see metrics for the most recent month with poor percentage shown alongside the volume. We also see the poor percentage and volume for just conferences. Finally, we see the volume of calls that involve PSTN and the poor percentage for those calls. In the next section, just below to the left, we see the information for volume by day of week with an overlay of poor percentage. We see a slightly different view of the data to the right by day of the month with an overlay of poor percentage. The final section of the report shows usage volume by hour of the day with an overlay of poor percentage. This table is shown in UTC for ease of use. My goal for this presentation was to introduce you to the Call Quality Dashboard Location Enhanced Reports so that you may become familiar with the content they provide. With this new knowledge, you will be able to explore, discover, and report on the performance of your Skype for Business online deployment like never before. I encourage you to use this knowledge and continue exploring the Call Quality Dashboard directly on your own as well as through other videos in this series. To stay up to date on what is happening regarding the Skype operational framework, please visit the resources listed here.